on a B, knowing it and writing it in your heart and being a doer of the word. And I see Madison over there. <laughs> Hello. She's driving her car. So be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm on my way back to Oklahoma. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you'll probably have a long drive then of wherever you are. Yes. Exactly. I have like three hours left. So yes. Oh, so we pray for safety on the road with you. Amen. The Lord is with you and he's mighty to save. So the holy yeah. angels will guard you and make sure that you're in perfect protection because now we're going to pray Amen. Psalm 91. But don't you be looking at the screen. You'll be looking at <laughs> your driving. <Road. laughs> yeah, yeah. You can listen, but no looking. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you know, we can't guarantee you're going <laughs> to, you got to have some common sense too. But we'll tell the angels take over on autopilot. But yeah, so I'll share a screen. And I'm so happy all of you are here with me. And we're gathering in whose name? The name of Jesus. Uh, so let's sing shalom to each other. And let's start right in on Psalm 91. So. Shalom, shalom, shalom to the sovereign here. Shalom, shalom to all who hear. Shalom, 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 shalom. That's a good way to start because his plans for us are shalom and not evil, uh, to give us a future and a hope. Say, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I, I agree. We want to agree with everything God says. We want to agree. You're going to find out today. You want to agree. You don't want to speak against it like the Israelites do. You want to agree. So let's pray. Let's sing. Let's pray uh, Psalm 91. And we're praying perfect protection for all of you, wherever you are, to have in the secret place of the most high, the sitar, the, uh, the bazaar, the shadow. Okay. I dwell in the secret place, the secret of, the place of the Most High, and I abide, and I abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, and my fortress, for he delivers me from the snare of the fowler, and from the deadly pestilence. He covers me with his opinions, and under his wings I find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a bore. I will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stops in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at midday. A thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me. I will only look with my eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because, because I have made the Lord, Lord my dwelling place, the most high my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall me. No plague come near my tent. For he commands his angels concerning me to guard me in all my ways. On their hands they bear me up, lest I strike my foot against a stone. I tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent I trample underfoot. Because you cling to me and love, says the Lord. I deliver you. I protect you because you know my name. When you call to me, I answer you. I am with you in trouble. I rescue you and honor you. In long life, I satisfy you and show you my salvation. And that's Yeshua, which is Jesus' name. Like he told Joseph, you'll name that baby Jesus, well, Yeshua in Hebrew, because he will save the people from their sins. He saves us. He's salvation in every situation. And I mean, he's the deliverer. He's the redeemer. He's the vine and we're the branches. And we're going to talk about that today. Oh, my goodness. What we're in for is wonderful. So you want the glory to fill the place where you are and you want the glory to fill your heart. Okay, so let's have the glory fill this place. So I say glory, you say glory, as we sing the salvation story. I say glory, you say glory, we sing glory to you. Yeah, let's give the Lord glory with our lives by um, being on the vine and bearing his fruit and giving him glory. But let's sing Samuel's song. And you want to hear God's word to you today. You want to hear that in your heart 
all the time, every day. Remember last lesson, one thing. You always need to know the one thing that he wants you to do at that moment. And you know, I've been asking him lately, tell me the one thing and he'll tell you. He'll take you right to the scripture and he'll tell you that one. And you know, cause there's myriads of scriptures on every problem. So you need the one particularly that he sends. He sends his word to heal you and deliver you from your destructions. So what that word is, you need to hear it. And that's where this lesson started that you will hear today is I was debating on whether to do something or not to do it. And I wasn't sure. And he took me, I said, what's the word on it, Lord? And he took me to John chapter 15, line seven. That's what started the series we're going to start today. But well, I will get to that in a moment, see? So, open my ears that I may hear. Open my eyes that I may see. Open my heart, Lord, to hear your voice. Lord, I'm listening. Your servant, I will to do your will is mine. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Your servant I will be, for to do your will, Lord, is my delight. Yeah, so we want to get filled with the Spirit so we know, we approve what is the will of the Lord in our lives. And, you know, he, he wants to lead you, the Holy Spirit, in the right path for his name's sake. So what we are saying, Adonai, Yahweh, you'll see it's Lord, Lord in the English translation has given me the tongue of a disciple. We're gonna talk about disciples today. That I may know how to sustain the weary one with a word that will rouse him. See, that's that one word. You gotta get it for yourself and you wanna speak that word to other people, the one word they need to encourage them at the moment. And there'll be one. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. Adonai Yahweh has opened my ear and I was not disobedient, nor did I turn back. So when we hear that word, we want to run with it, right? We want to run with it. So we're going to sing out our joy, joy song. So, oh, Lord, you've given me new birth in him who died. And all I need for this new life you have supplied. So let's try. Okay, ready? Oh Lord, you let's see. Oh Lord, you've given me new birth in him who died. And all I need in this new life you have supplied. You have showered me with grace. I lifted up my face. But I might shine with joy. I am the wings you gathered in your body. And no weapon formed against me does more. You have showered me with grace. I lifted up my face, and I might shine with joy. You created me, and you in Christ my life. You hide me in the mountains You have showered me in the rain. Lifted up my face, that I might shine with joy. That I might shine with joy. I might shine with joy. I might shine with joy. Today we're going to be talking about the vine and the branches, so I thought maybe we should sing this. Okay, on the night of that last supper, when you gave us the bread and the wine, you told us how to be fruitful. Branches on your vine, you said, love one another. As I have loved you, when you do this, you'll be fruitful. Everything you do, so love one another. As I have loved you, then my joy will be within you, and your joy will reign and to love is not an option. When you spoke it, you spoke as the man. So that when we shall fulfill it, grace will flood our land. You said love one another. 
as I, I love, love you. you. When you do, you do so beautiful. And everything you do, you so love one another. As I, I love, love you. 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 So and my joy I will be to you. And your joy, and your joy will be to you. Love does not seek its own interest. It is patient and gentle. Love is in gentle, sorry, great. Love renews my mind. You said love one another as I have loved you. When you do, you will be in everything you do. So love one another as I have loved you. Then my joy will be within you and your joy will remain true. We are known as your disciples when we faithfully keep your command. And when we love one another, we stand and use and love one another as I have loved you. When you do this, you'll be fruitful in everything you do. So love one another as I have loved you. And my joy will be with you, and your joy will be with you. Everybody said, Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, you're all bearing good fruit over there. Now, remember, this yes. is the year of triumph. And what did he say? It's pleased the Father to give you the kingdom. Jesus went about preaching the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Look where it is, right in his hands. <laughs> so we take it, we take it by the tongue. We take it by the hand of our tongue, yod of our tongue. That's what it says. Death and life are in the hand of your tongue. So you take things, you claim things, you say things, you agree with God with your tongue. How can you say just anything and get it? No, it has to be in agreement with our great high priest because he watches, he's the high priest of our homologia. That means we're saying the same thing. I'm going to tell you something. You want to agree. You want to agree. You want to take out Psalm 103 and, well, let's see. Let's agree with this. Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus and manifests uh, through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. Arise and shine, take courage, all you who hope in the Lord. See, uh, when we were talking to Leslie about witnessing, that's what we bring, the sweet aroma of the knowledge of Christ. We bring it into the place where we're talking with them, right into the, the shopping. Uh, and so this is the year of triumph. We've read that before, but I leave it in to remind us. Don't want to forget, keep your eyes on the going in that triumphal procession with Christ. Now, woo, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Woo! This, uh, I don't know if you've read this promise in John 15, but it is an amazing promise. It's tremendous. I should think we'd all be interested to find out how to have this promise in our lives, yes? Because God's yes, word yes. is true. He cannot lie. So if he told us this, can we have this? Yes. Did Jesus yes. walk this way? Did Jesus walk this way? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. What he asked happened, didn't it? He said, Father, I know you hear me. I know you always hear me. Lazarus, come out. Did Lazarus come out? Yes. Yeah. And he said, I do will it be cleansed. So Jesus gave you this tremendous promise, which means, of course, that the Father gave it to you because though he spoke long ago to the fathers, like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he spoke then in the prophets, like Elisha, Elijah, Isaiah, in many portions. Yeah, I know you find many, many wonderful treasures in, and you add it all up to Christ. But in these last days, how does he speak to us? In Jesus. Because who is Jesus? He's the word, the word made flesh. And the word is God, right? And he imported yes. him, you know, this is how great the word is. The word is a word of power. It is God himself. You want to agree with that. Now, he appointed him heir of all things. Are you joint heir with him? Yeah, yes. he tells us that. The Holy Spirit witnesses with your spirit that you're a child of God when you believe in Jesus and that you are a joint heir, heir of God. Woo! What's Jesus say the Father gave him? Everything. What's yours in Jesus? Everything. Yeah, he's everything. 
So he made the world through that word. And Jesus, we see the radiance of the Father's glory. What does he say about you? If you're following him, you're now the light of the world. And you don't put it under a bushel basket. You shine it on everyone in the house. You're putting your hands on the sick. You're speaking, you're casting out demons. And the exact representation of his nature. There's um, Paul in his letter to Ephesians. He prays that we'll be filled with all the fullness of God. How can that happen? You get filled with the Holy Spirit. Because who's the Holy Spirit? He's God. If he's in you and filling you up, what are you filled up with? <laughs> Resurrection life. Okay. And he holds yes. everything. Now, here's the promise. So I want somebody to read it for Leslie, you were first on. So will you read us the promise? Okay. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it, it will be done for you. John 15, 7. Okay. We're starting on a journey here. We're starting a treasure hunt. But did you ever read this promise? Now I'm going to ask a question. Do you believe it? But now the most important question has it come to pass in your life? If it has not, yes. and if in your heart you've been disappointed when things didn't manifest that you had wanted and asked for, then it's time to take another look. Now, first of all, you got to see this promise has a condition. It says, if you, then what happens? The other, right? So it, first you see it's only for those who abide in Jesus and his words abide in them. So I would think we would all be desirous to make sure we're abiding in him and his words are abiding in us, which of course also means that in him, you are abiding in the father because his words are abiding in you since Jesus only spoke the father's words. And I want to, you know, tell you, you can tell real easy whether someone's abiding in Jesus and abiding in his word or not. Yes, <laughs> you just so have true. to talk with him for a while. <laughs> Yeah. And you'll see Amen. what I mean in a minute. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but I'm jumping ahead. So I don't want to jump. You will know them by their fruit. Okay. Fruit of the lips and fruit, and fruit of their lives. Okay. So um, we're going to be uh, checking on your fruit today. No. Okay. Now, I want, <laughs> I want somebody, Anne, will you read for us if anyone loves me? Unmute. I'm sorry. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him, and he will come to him and make our abode with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. That's John uh, chapter 14, oopsie daisy, chapter 14, uh, verse 22 to 24. When you're talking about fruits, my, I brought, my tree had bananas, so this is my, my fruit for my banana tree. Oh, how Cool. She's, like, she's like show bonnie your fruit and i'm like what fruit what fruit your banana oh so here's my banana here's my fruit this is my fruit <laughs> yeah can i ask you a question ann you must live in hawaii yeah she does. can your banana tree can your banana tree bear anything but bananas no no yeah, only that's not a trick question so yeah. you can tell by the fruit what kind of tree it is right <laughs> what kind of tree yeah, that branch is attached to well, we that's know that was, that's a banana. So we know it's on a banana tree. We don't have to guess. Is that on an apple tree? You know, we don't have to guess, right? No. So, uh, and the same about people. You don't have to guess. And we'll get on to that. That's good. Yeah. And so if you keep my word, then this is an amazing promise. This is just like abiding, right? He's going to come. He not only say, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you get what you want. He says, well, if you do keep my word and abide in me and, I, and, and keep my words abide in you, then I'm going to come and abide with, in you with my father, too. And we'll bring the Holy Spirit with us. Woo. Uh, it sounds like this is a partnership, <laughs> you know, and he tells you these words aren't just mine and the father's. Now, you got to pay attention to that Jesus only said the words of the father, which is good because he is the word. But I we, should, we need to imitate him. We need to imitate him. Now, if he didn't, and let's see what he says here. For, uh, let's see, how about you, um, Maggie? For I did not speak. For I did not speak on my own initiative, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment as to what to say and what to speak. I know that his commandment is eternal life. Therefore, the things I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. 
John 12, 49 to 40, 50, 250. <laughs> Yeah, isn't this amazing? But we should take from this too. Has the Father himself given us commandment what to say? Oh, yeah. And he's also even commanded us what to think. Remember, Paul? Think on these things. And then what does yeah. the, the, Jesus say? Take no thought about what will we eat. What, you know, all this worrying about your what you're going to eat. And drink. He tells us what not to think on and what to think on. Don't fear. He tells us, you know, what to say and what not to say. Don't say this. This is amazing. Now, if we just obey, you know what a beautiful life we would have? Very beautiful. Now, Very beautiful. the Lord is the one that teaches you to profit and the way you should go. So I think we need to ask him how to do this. So, I, in fact, I, I like this scripture so much. Would you read it for us, Juanita? Thus says the Lord. Okay. The Lord, thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. Isaiah 48, 17. Oh, is, this is a wonderful promise. What does that tell you? He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be successful. He's going to show you how. And so today, for those of you, and I know it's all of you, who want to go deeper and see this promise prove true in your life. For his words, it says in Psalm 12, 6, are pure words as silver tried in a furnace on the earth refined seven times. So we know his words are true. The, and this is beginning a series of life lessons on how to abide in him and have his words abide in you. So you can ask what you wish and it will be done for you. Do you sound interested in that? I think we are. Now, uh, maybe I just want to show you something for a second. Let's go here. Okay. Um, let me open another screen because I just want to show you what the lessons are going to be. So you want to join every week. Okay. Lesson one is today. Forgive, forget, and proceed. Life lesson two will be next week. Do not fear, only keep on believing. This is lessons and how to abide. Life lesson number three Give and it shall be given unto you. Life lesson number four, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. This is an amazing teaching. I never understood it until. I mean, he's exploring these with me in a way that I never even saw. Life lesson number five, love one another as I have loved you. This is amazing. Life lesson number six, believe in the name, mindful of the covenant. Life lesson number seven, never waver, never quit the life of the overcomer. Life lesson number eight, call it all joy. And life lesson number nine, just agree. So I think you may be interested in joining every week, yeah? You don't want to miss any of these. So I'm so happy that all of you are with me. This is a blessing. Now, if you want to read, I, I, you know, I'll call on you. So, you know, I, I need uh, your attention now. Here, we're going to go back to our share screen with this one. Okay, now. We know that when we're going to take a promise, you can't just look at the promise. You got to look at everything around it, you know, in context. So don't take it out of the text. You know, you want to see what it says around it because it's going to give you huge insights on how you do it, you see. So we want that. Now, this promise, I think many of you know what is in John 15. It's the teaching about the believers being like a branch in a vine, abiding in the vine. Jesus is the vine, you're the branches, and the father is the vine keeper, vine dresser, you know? And so this is very interesting because it sees us as an enterprise. We're producing and we're getting from our source, but we're, we're all producing, it's enormous. The, the, what this is in enormous, it's, got, it's a like teaching to J Jesus being the head and us the body, and then the spirit going through as the life of the body and abiding in each one. But, so you're going to see that this is a heavenly calling to this kingdom enterprise. And it's, it's a vineyard. He's like, he'd tell them, have you been standing here idle all day? I'm going to send you to the vineyard. Well, let's go to the vineyard. Okay. So let's see how Jesus starts it out. Now, will you read for us, Kanani? I am the true vine. <clears throat> okay. I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes 
purges, cleanses. It is so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean, purged, because of the word which I have spoken to you. John 15, verse 1 through 3. So this is, this is amazing. This is beautiful. Um, he's the vine. The father's the vine dresser, taking care of the vine. He sees the vine and the branches as one entity, right? And indeed, if you look at older grapevines, you can't really tell always where the vine and the branches, where the branches start. They all look kind of alike. We're supposed to get looking just like Jesus, aren't we? And he takes, well, doesn't the father is a vine dresser. What does he clothe us in? clothes us in when we're baptized we're clothed in christ yeah Ooh. so um and we see here this pruning this purging this cleansing he does it by the word we see you're purged because of the word it takes out you know if you could say you know what the word does it changes our mind in the sense that it brainwashes us <laughs> your brain may need a good washing right a good washing for your brain the word will wash it of all that junk because we have to agree, I, I, I got to talk to you about this. Minute. But the teaching reveals how you function as one in, with, and through Jesus as the Father watches over the vine. So He's cleaning you, He's pruning you, He's supporting you, He's caring for the growth. And where's that life, the sap coming? It's the Holy Spirit, and it's the love and life of God in the branches. And He's that Spirit goes right in you, just like the sap goes into the vine, from the vine into the branches. The Holy Spirit residing in you, you've got the, the you're partakers of the divinity, of the divine nature. That's grace, too. You know, so isn't this wonderful? Now, let's go on. So, um, let's see. Who would like to read that? Let's see. Anybody? Uh, somebody? Let's see. Kashmir, do you want to read Abide in Me? <clears throat> Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Sure. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. So look at that again. You abide in him, he in you. Then you're like this branch on a vine and you'll bear fruit because branches can't help it. They bear fruit. If they're a good branch and they're attached, it's going to come. And you're going to bear the fruit of the vine you're on. And so we're going to bear the fruit of the spirit. And we know what that is. Love, joy, peace, patience, self-control. Whoa, this is, and what do you do? You eat the fruit of your lips. You're going to get to eat that fruit. Woo. And you're going to feed it to others too. And, uh, but apart from him, we can't do anything. Isn't that wonderful? You don't have to worry about doing this on your own. He said, I already know you can't. A branch can't work without the vine. It just can't. But with the vine, it's great. Mm -hmm. But what we have to realize mm -hmm. too so is that, called. you know, without being attached, we can't bear the fruit. And you can't live apart from the vine. A lot of people are the living dead. They're not attached to the vine and they're trying to bear fruit and their fruit's not going to last. So, it, you know, but the branch is the part that actually bears the fruit. So, um, what? My, somebody's having a, a very uh, interesting conversation, but we don't want to hear it right now. <laughs> Who was ever laughing so hard or whatever? Will you mute yourself, please? And so, that, and I, although I love to hear it, but not right now. So when the vine, uh, when it's attached, it's receiving everything from the vine, but also from the sunshine. What do we have? Oh, Lord of hosts, let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. So there's the Father shining on us too. That's Psalm 80, 19. But just as the branch, now get this, can't bear fruit apart from the vine. So to the vine, there's no fruit without the branch. Mm -hmm. So God needs you to come to, into his kingdom for the kingdom to come on earth. And this heavenly um, vine, because now Jesus is seated at the right hand. So we are attached to the heavenly vine. But where are you seated? You know, Ephesians 2, 6. In the spirit, he raised you with him and seated you in Christ in the heavens. So there we are abiding in the heavenly vine, but here on earth, Christ is in us. 
the mystery of Christ in you, your hope of glory by his spirit. So here we are down here still abiding in the vine. And yet he's reaching out with all of us branches, like the body of Christ. It's another way he shows it. And the spirit's in us. The spirit is here with us. That sap has come down into us. He's here with us producing the fruit by the Holy Spirit in you. And Jesus baptizes you in the Holy Spirit. It pours it. That pours the love of God, God himself, into your heart so you can love, so you can do these things. Now, we can do all things in him who strengthens him, but strengthens us. But without him, we really don't bear any good fruit. So now let's look at the very first sentence after the promise. Janice, will you read that for us? My father. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. John 15, 8. Oh, so we see something wonderful here. It's disciples. The abiding life is the life of a disciple, and it should have fruit. And Jesus very clearly divines a disciple for you. Janice, you didn't read a lot, so read this, John 8, 31 to 3, right here, if you continue. If you continue, abide, remain in my word, you are truly my disciple, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John 8, 31 through 32. You see, all these scriptures are matching up, you know. It tells you what a disciple is. A disciple is one abiding in the word, same word that he uses in John 15. So you abide in the word, you listen to the word, you study the word, you meditate on the word, you speak the word, you do the word. We see that in the letter of James. We see instruction to Joshua of how to be successful, right? You got to meditate on the word day and night. You got to speak only word. You're going in a land of giants. You better stick in agreement with me on the word or you're going to get scared. You know, you need to walk in the word. So it's a total oneness with his word. It's an agreement. See, a disciple is in agreement with his teacher and becomes just like his teacher. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Um, well, I'll just read that. It's enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher. That's Matthew 10, 25. So we want to be like our teacher. Now, if you keep God's word, you are his disciple. But what happens if you keep the devil's word? Guess whose disciple you are? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to get the same fate he got, right? Now, let's read that. Okay. Oh, Janice, I'll get you again. If they have called. If they have called the head of the house, Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? Matthew 10, 25. Beelzebub is the Lord of the flies. And I got to tell you, Satan is like a fly. <laughs> I mean, he's going to keep coming after you and he's annoying. But can a fly kill you? No. So, you know, what you have to do is, no, he's not that power. He's about like a fly. But flies keep trying to land on you. And you don't want to let them land. He's trying to give you his thoughts. He's trying to inject your thoughts. And if you won't listen to him, he'll try to make you see it on the news or read a book or your friend will tell you or whatever. You know, he's trying to get somebody to get a thought in your head. That's the wrong thought. That's what he wants to do. So you got to watch your words that you're allowing yourself to think on and the words you're saying and decide whose disciple you are. And as I said, they'll know you by your fruits. And what fruits are those? The fruit of your lips and the fruit of your lives. So that's the, he, he is, God has prepared a life of good deeds for you in advance in Christ Jesus, that you might walk in them. That's your choice. And, you know, and the fruit of your lips. Now, if you're dwelling, now think about this, think about your thoughts. If you're having thoughts of envy, anger, bitterness about, you know, anybody, your siblings, your coworkers, your boss, anybody, if you're, you're not abiding in the Lord as word. And if you're allowing depression, grieving, fear, anxiety, jealousy, condemnation, and other thoughts of a similar vein to control your mind, you're not abiding in the Lord. And you're going to get mentally ill. These are not his words abiding in you. What you have to do is develop what's called a zero tolerance policy for words contrary to God's word if you want this promise. I am working on this and it's the most wonderful thing i have gotten a zero tolerance property and but see then you start noticing the minute you slip into one you look at your joy level you look at your confidence level now i'm going to tell you something right now that's going to be very helpful to you because as uh, many of you know i have something i keep bringing up to the lord that i did in 2012 that i think he told me to do something and i didn't do it i started and then i didn't do it and all these years i'm like oh, this is like moses with the promised land I didn't do it. but you know so he finally says to me the other day are you going to agree or not and i said uh -huh. he said what did i tell you first importance christ died for your sins your sins are forgiven i remember them no more 
And he starts going through Psalm 103. I forgive all your sins. How many is that? I said, oh. He said, are you going to agree with it? Or are you going to fight with it? I said, oh, I agree. He said, okay, start agreeing. He said, anytime you get that thought, say, oh, no, no. I agree. I'm forgiven. I agree. I agree. I'm healed. So listen to Psalm 103 and just say, I agree after me. Okay. He pardons all your iniquities and sins. I agree. Okay. He heals all your diseases. I agree. I agree. Okay. He pardons. Wait, I said that right. He redeems your life from the pit. That's depression. That's addictions. That's um, financial problems. Okay. He redeems. That means he pulls you out. He saves you. He makes you prosperous. He makes you self-control. No addictions. Do you agree with this? He redeems. I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay. I agree. Angels are listening. I agree. I agree. Now, <laughs> I agree. He crowns agree. you. He surrounds you with love and compassion. I, I agree. agree. Don't I start agree. saying everybody hates me at my job. I can just tell. No, you say he surrounds me with love and compassion. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah, it, it tells you favor is on the head of the righteous. Say I agree. He even makes you really at peace with you. Do you agree? I, I agree. agree. I agree. I found it's really good. You just gotta agree. If you're in the army and the sergeant tells you to do something, do you say I don't agree with that? No. <laughs> I don't think you can. <laughs> you, you'd be in big trouble. No. You can. You're not allowed. And remember, uh, Paul likens us to soldiers with commanders. That's the wrong ruler, right? Now, he fills your days with good things. Hmm. I agree. Okay. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I'm all day. And um, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I agree. I agree. I, I, I agree. agree. I agree. I, agree. You know, <laughs> I, read, I read Job 33, 24 to 25. He says, I've found a ransom. She's delivered. Let her flesh become as fresh as a child and her youthful vigor return. What do I say? I agree. I agree. I agree. I, agree. I, agree. I, agree. I found a ransom. His I name is Jesus. And I agree. So now, when I read something in the Bible, I go, I agree. I agree, you know? And oh. what if the Israelites had said that instead of saying, he lied to us. He brought us out here just to uh -oh. die in the desert and we're not going to conquer this. What if they'd said like, Joshua, I agree. If the Lord told us we're doing it, I agree. You know, let's go do it, guys. I agree. Doesn't make life simple. would have been shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it make your life simple? Yes, yes. I agree. I agree. I just agree. <laughs> I agree. And that's what abiding in the vine is all about. You're agreeing. You know, you're, yes. you know, and, and it, what does he tell you? Don't judge. Don't gossip. What do you know? I agree with that. I'm not going to do it. I agree. I agree. Don't lie. I agree. I agree. I don't lie. I'm not going to lie. Now, now the apostle Paul, he said he took every thought captive to obedience to Christ. Whoa. But he gave you a list of things you're supposed to think on. So um, let me see. Leslie, would, uh, you, Yudi, would you like to read us the list? Uh, finally. Oh. Brethren, forever is true, forever is honorable, forever is right, forever is pure, forever is lovely, forever is of good repute. If there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things, the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Philippians 4, 8 to 9. Now that's a nice long list of things you can look at or think about. Don't get off it. You know, yes, you your checklist when a thought comes in. Hmm, let me check you out before I employ you. Are you true? Are you honorable? Are you lovely? Do you agree with God? Are you right? You know, and if it doesn't, you say, oh, oh. you know, you're not staying. So I'm not thinking on you, but th this is, this is good. And this is good about your coworkers, about your husband, about your children. Don't be just looking at what's bad about them. Because pretty soon you're going to be uh, scolding and not molding them. Yeah. You see the difference? God is the potter with the clay. He molds us by his word. He molds us. He doesn't scold us. Has God ever scolded you? No. He speaks the word that's correction. But God is, God, you know, at times I've deserved a good scolding, but I haven't gotten it. <laughs> he just, he gives you a correction, right? And he's yeah. molding you. And if you're going to keep on doing what you're going to do, what's he going to say? You're going to get what you said. That's just a spiritual law. They got what they said. They said, we'd rather die in the desert. And that wasn't God's will, but guess what they did? They died in the desert. So now let's continue with the sentences after this. And I have so much more to share. So let's just keep going. But um, let me see uh, who'd like to read. Uh, Anne, would you read for us again? And then, and you remember they called you Annie Banani? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. I guess that's why I have banana trees in my backyard. <laughs> so, so fitting. 
<laughs> okay. Um, hey, you bear fresh fruit. <laughs> yes. 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 Thank you. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. That's John chapter 15, verses 9 through 11. Amen. Yeah, I and agree. you see that, you know, yeah, I agree. But you see that keeping his commandments and abiding in him, he's not saying it's going to be an unhappy life. It's going to have his joy in you. And it's, you're going to live on in his love. Living and walking in God's love is wonderful. So this shows you that abiding in his word makes your life a life lived and surrounded by, upheld by, filled with love. And you want to start imitating. Imitate God as his dear children. You want to think on those lovely things. You want to speak. God has lovely thoughts. He has beautiful thoughts. In fact, in Isaiah 55, he says, let the wicked, let the unrighteous forsake his thoughts because my thoughts are higher than yours. Put it up there. Put it up there. And it's like the rain and snow to water the earth. My, my thoughts are coming down. Receive them. They're giving seed to the sower, bread to the eater. Plant them. Eat them. They're lovely. They'll make you lovely. And uh, this is amazing. This is, this is lovely, lovely things. You know, uh, it says in Psalm, is it 139? Oh, Lord, how precious are your thoughts towards me. His thoughts towards you are precious. Sometimes you just need to sit down with a pad and say, what are you thinking about me, Lord? And they'll say, you're precious in my sight and I love you. And you know, he's quoting from Isaiah, the prophet. And so you see oh, this, God. you know, you're my bride. I remember one time I was telling the Lord, Lord, just tell me. Remember Kanani when I said this to you? I said, just judge me. Just tell me what I do wrong. Just tell me everything wrong with me. Just let me know. And so I was driving the car and I just let me know. And I was ready to get, you know, the ax to fall about all the things I do wrong. And I was at a stop signal and I looked up and the Lord says to me, you don't judge a bride. You don't judge a bride. <laughs> and you're my bride. So what does he do with the bride, the church? He cleanses her. He makes her without spot, without wrinkle. He makes her beautiful. He takes care of her like his own flesh. He said, you're my bride. You don't judge a bride. You just improve her. <laughs> and I'm like, Woo! isn't our God wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Yes. Wow. So, so he yes. says, so now we know we're going to start lesson number one. That was all pretty bad. And this is called, well, how to have your prayers answered is what this is about. You abide in him, what you wish. You know why? Because when you're abiding in him and you're sharing thoughts, what you want is what he wants. And what he wants is what you want because you're agreeing, right? It becomes amazing. But I want you to read, uh, Yudi, you're there. Therefore, I say to you, here is another instruction that's going to tell you this is a commandment of Jesus. So he says, you can keep my commands if you love me. So this is a commandment of Jesus. So go ahead. And it's the second part I want to concentrate on. But Yudi, go ahead. Therefore, I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them and they will be yours. Whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you your transgressions. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive your transgressions. Mark eleven twenty four to 26. This is very serious, and I think that's why the Lord wanted to start his life lessons here. If you don't learn this and let go of those things, you cannot go forward. So you'll notice the first part is going to be our lesson next week. Don't fear, only keep on believing to have what you've asked for. But the second is important. It's not going to come to pass unless you've forgiven. But I always used to puzzle about this part. If you don't forgive, he won't forgive. But I said, Father, you took care of all my sins on Jesus, so I am forgiven. But then you may remember the teaching on the standard but I want to go back to it. So life lesson number one, forgive, forget, and proceed. So just look at your heart. You don't have to share this with me, but if you're harboring, we, many of us are, any kind of hatred, resentment, bitterness, jealousy, or anger against anyone, including yourself, you're disappointed in things you've done, or even God for putting you where he did and what you had, it comes in this category. So how do you get this out of you? 
Well, the Lord is certainly showing us because if he asks us to do something, he shows us how. Now, Jesus told you, you must forgive your brother from your heart. So we see like faith, because you believe in your heart, you speak with your mouth, that forgiveness is a matter of the heart. It starts in your spirit, the inner man. And that's where the Holy Spirit is pouring his love in your heart. So we're seeing something here. But the Father tells you to forgive others in the same way he's forgiven you. And don't jump to conclusions of what you think he's done to forgive you. And, but maybe I would ask you. And uh, so let's just read that. Can anybody read for us? Let all bitterness. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 to 32. Thank you. And you know, we read that and we're like, okay, but how did God forgive you? And I know you all know. He didn't just say, okay, Bonnie, I'm just going to pretend you never sinned. God is just, and he has zero tolerance for sin. Let me know. I, he has zero tolerance for sin. You have to know that. The wages of sin is death. Yes, yes. He told Adam, you eat that, and Matimut, you're going to die the second death. And, you know, what, so what did he do? He has to, to satisfy his justice, but he loves you. His mercy is very great. So he took all your sins and put them on Jesus. And boy, did he punish Jesus. You got to admit the wrath fell on him like it's never fallen. Why? He had every sin on him from the beginning to the end of time. Every yucky, terrible thing anybody had done. So he forgives you by the blood of Jesus. He made peace through the blood of the cross and reconciled you to himself in Christ. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for you. In him, you become the righteousness of God. So you stand before the Father, blameless, holy, and without reproach because of what he did for you in Jesus. Now, Jesus took the punishment by taking your sins and your faults. But I want you to note something. He not only paid that price to the Father, he paid it to each of you. That's no longer your fault because... He paid the ransom, though, it tells us in 1 Timothy 2, 6, for everyone. Everyone's sins have went on him. But whether you receive it or not will say whether you're still under your own sins or you've had them taken off. If Jesus is not your Lord and you have not received him, you have refused the gift of total forgiveness by him taking your punishment. You said, I don't need that. I can do it on my own. Have you ever tried to help somebody take Jesus' Lord and they say, I don't need that? I, I just want to do it on my own. You know, I'm a good person. I'm okay. You know? Yes. Th this is not okay. It, it's such a free gift. Won't you take it? It's so easy. Uh -huh. But, you know, if you don't, the devil will be your master and you're going to die in your sins just like he is. Now, it's up to you. But you have to know this. That person that you're so mad at, G Jesus did pay you the price of that sin by his blood. But there's a spiritual law that's even bigger than that. And that is this one. So Madison, I don't want you to read because you're driving. <laughs> now, I asked uh, Leslie, you read. Do, oh, Lisa, I think Lisa came in and then we'll get Leslie again. But Lisa, will you read, do not judge. Okay. okay. It is a spiritual law that the standard with which you measure is measured back to you. And as you judge, so are you judged. Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Now, this is a spiritual law. Now, things work by laws. Can you get out of the laws just because you don't like them? The law of gravity. No. Can, you, can you jump out your window just because you want to fly like Superman and you no. don't like it? No. You got to be smart. <laughs> It's like the devil told Jesus, Jesus, throw yourself down from the parapet of the temple, you know, and God will catch you. And just like, no, I'm not going to do that. That's stupid. You know, we said, <laughs> I, I, I set up the law of gravity. I'm not going to go violate it. But if you don't forgive another person, what are you saying? That Christ is not enough to satisfy you for their offense. You're saying the blood is not enough for me. Well, then the father has to apply that same standard to you. If the blood's not enough for you to forgive that person's sins, then the blood's not enough to get yours forgiven. That's your standard. Woo. Do you see? 
And that's why he said, when that servant didn't forgive his fellow servant, he said, I forgive you so much. Why didn't you forgive that guy? Now it's going back on you and you got to pay. So yes, our sins have all been forgiven, but there's a, there's a standard that you need to say, yes, that was enough for me. And that even has to do with your own sins. If you're after yourself all the time about how you messed up your life, you're saying the blood is not enough to have taken that away. And, oh, that's good. and then God will give, give, give you the same standard. Now, do you want that standard used on you? Sure. No. I agree. No. The blood is enough. How many agree? I, I agree. agree. I agree. So that means you got to know it was enough for the other person, too, to satisfy you. It's like when an insurance company pays you for the damage some arsonist or somebody did to your house. You're made whole. You don't have to go pursue the arsonist to try to get even. The insurance company will because they want to get their money back. <laughs> but that's like God making, it, God making it right, right? But God's made it right for you. He's like your insurer. Now, do you see, this is like what the, Jesus calls, like, we call the golden rule. He says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's because that standard is going to come back on you. As you measure out to others, they're going to measure back on you. That's just sowing and reaping, you guys. That's the way the system works. Now, forgiveness is just not this nice thing that you do for other people. It's, a, you know, it's like if you want to go ruin somebody's life, that's a ruin that's going to come back on you. So watch it, right? Watch it. Um, now, I want to give you, before we go, get done today, I just got to give you this because it's so beautiful. I want to show you a good example that God gave me to consider of forgiveness. And it's Jacob's son, Joseph. You're going to see this. You're going to see. He must have read that scripture. That if you abide in God and God's word abides in you, you can ask what you will and it's going to happen. He was careful about this, wasn't he? Now, if you look at his life and ah, Joseph, oh my gosh, we don't, you don't begin to know what a genius he was. But when you start watching like Tim Mahoney's and the different things they're digging up over there now in archaeology, mm -hmm. Joseph invented the Hebrew alphabet. It was a spoken language before, but he took some like, he, he made it into a pictogram language like hieroglyphics, but only 22 letters. The hieroglyphics has thousands of letters. You have to be so smart, but he put it in 22. And we're still got an alphabet that like, he created so, so that even a child can learn how to read every word if they can. It's a brilliant, he's a brilliant man. And in the years when there was plenty, he made what's still called Joseph Waterway in Egypt. He diverted the Nile to make a bread basket. He made so much grain, it said they finally couldn't even count it. Joseph was brilliant, but why? He heard from God and God, did he ever get training in this? No, no. but he knew. And even Pharaoh recognized that the spirit of the living God is on this guy. We need him, we need him. Now, this is a good example. Now his brothers hated him, didn't they? They were jealous. Is that a wrong thing to have for somebody? They should have been proud of their brother reflecting their family. Instead, they hated him. They were jealous. So what did they do? They plotted to kill him. But God didn't let that happen. Reuben, their brother said, ah, just throw him in that pit. Now Reuben wanted to come and get him out, but Reuben went away for a bit. I don't know, he must have had something he needed to do out there in the desert. But while he was doing that, a caravan of Ishmaelites. Now these are descendants of Ishmael. So, you know, everybody has their place. They buy Joseph. And they, you know, Joseph, it says, the brothers later when they talked about it, they said, we remember his cries. We remember how he fought. He didn't just say, okay, guys, tie me up, throw me in the pit, that's fine. He fought with them. And all these big guys that were his brothers, he was only 17, overpowered him. Can you imagine me treating about like that by your siblings? And then all tied up and thrown in a pit and you can't get out. And you're wondering what's gonna happen. And nobody can hear your cries, but these brothers that did it to you. Well, then they also, and you get pulled out by these traders. They tie you in chains. It says that in the Bible, he was taken down in chains and they go sell you on a slave block in Egypt, somewhere you've never been. Now, this may have been something that a lot of people would think was not forgivable and later would have talked about it on all the talk shows that they had them on. <laughs> but, you know, this was not Joseph's way because we know it wasn't. Because something the Lord keeps telling us repeatedly when he went down there. The Lord was with Joseph, so he became a successful man. What did we just read back there? That 
if anyone loves me, he'll keep my word and my father love me and we'll come to him and make our abode with him. Ooh. And we read again, when he got, he became a successful man with Potiphar. There he is, such an excellent slave. He had a spirit of excellence. And you find out why. He said to Potiphar's wife, I can't do this evil in the sight of my God. He was always walking in the sight of God. And so he gets thrown in jail because he won't be impure with Potiphar's wife. And so it says in the jail, the Lord was with Joseph and extended kindness to him and gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. He got in charge of the jail. You know, wherever he was, people recognized the spirit of excellence and they put him in charge. You know, this is amazing. And what did he do? He blessed them. He made Potiphar rich. It says Potiphar never had increased like that. He made the jailer so he could go play golf all day. And, and you know, <laughs> Joseph took care of the prison. And we know that he did never have a down day because we read that when he was in the prison, two of the guys in prison there that he was in charge of, one morning he came in and he noticed they looked dejected. And he said, why are your faces so sad today? This means his wasn't. <laughs> You know, it's, they didn't say to him, well, so what's your problem? We're all in jail. You know, he's like, what's your problem? Why are you looking sad? You know, that's interesting, isn't it? How many of you would be looking like wondering why somebody looked depressed in prison if you were in prison with them? You know, I was like, no, he was not going to sympathize with that. And we know that he never shared with anyone what his brothers or Potiphar's wife had done to him. Why do I know that? Listen to him. In the jail. There was, he was talking to the two other prisoners, the beggar in the, that wanted and he wanted to know what, and he says, you know, I'm in here because I was taken out by force out of my native land and I haven't done anything here that should put me in prison. Is that a gossiper? No. no. Is that reliving and telling somebody? Because we know why. I think he just put it out of his mind too. He wasn't going to relive that. He wasn't going to talk about it. He wasn't going to bring it up again. Because why? It made him unhappy. He didn't want to be unhappy. He wanted to go forward to that dream he'd had where everybody was bowing to him. He wanted that dream. Now, Pharaoh knew nothing. We know that about Joseph's brothers because when they came for food in the famine and he discovered they were Joseph's brothers, he was so happy. You know, you read it. It says the good news came to him that Joseph's brothers were there. He's like, wow, I didn't know you had so many big brothers, you know, and it's like, whoa, this is cool. Just tell them I'll come down here with their dad. I'll save them from the famine. You're, you're, you're taking care of everything. I'll give them the best land in Goshen to live on, you know, right near you. And uh, would he have done that if he'd known what they did to Joseph? He loved Joseph. He would have hung them all by their toes, you know, but he didn't. And Joseph, finally, his brothers came to him and said, they're afraid. Now that he's in power, he's going to kill them all. But what did he tell them? He told him, you meant it for my harm, but God worked it out for my good. And not only my good, but your good, the good of our family that's going to not die out, but have descendants, and the good of everyone in Egypt in the Middle East. Joseph was very conscious of his mission, that God had sent him to save lives. And he was going to do it. And God told him how to do it. And we know that Joseph got everything he asked for but he only asked for what God had shown him he could have, didn't he? And God gave him more. He gave him a beautiful wife and he gave him a palace and he gave him two sons that gave him so much joy. He even named one Ephraim. God has made me fruitful in the place of my exile and Manasseh he's made me forget all my trials, you know? And so this was beautiful. And you would say, did Joseph... He forgave, but he did he really forget? And I would say to you, yes. And I think it's time for me to stop. I hear three o'clock ringing somewhere on somebody's clock. But I would say yes. You know why? Because never talking about what his brothers or Potiphar's wife had done to him, never reliving it in gossip, never dwelling on it in his own inner thoughts. And we know he didn't because the mouth speaks what fills the heart. And never bringing it up again to the ones who did it to him. He never brought it up. They had to go to him and ask him, "Would you know? Don't don't hurt us. Forgive us. He's like, that's not on my radar. But I call that forgetting. Oh, sure, he knew what they'd done to him, but he chose not to let it bother him. And God knows what we've done, you know, but he chooses to forget it because it all went on Jesus. And he doesn't see it on us anymore. So this is for, so when you abide in God and his words abide in you, it shows. It shows. It showed on Joseph and he was humble. When Pharaoh said, I hear you interpret dreams, he said, it's not me. God will give Pharaoh an answer. 
and and God did through Joseph. And Joseph made Pharaoh rich and well provided for him. He made him the strongest empire. Now, I'll just say this before we close. The most perfect example, of course, of forgive, forget, and proceed is Jesus. He kept pouring himself out to save us. And he was saving everybody who had rebelled and hurt God since the beginning to the end of time. Not just the people around him. Even all my sins, your sins, he was taking them on. Why? Because his love and his compassion outweighed any sin you can commit. And that's how it is with God. His mercy and compassion are beyond all we can ask or think. He remembers that we're formed from dust in our bodies, but with spirit and soul. But he knows how wonderful we can be if we hear the right words, if we think the right thoughts, and we say the right words. So remember, don't scold others, mold them into the word, because speak correction with love and compassion. They don't know what they do, but you know, because God's word should not, you should know you're reading God's word. And what he say? I call your friends because I've made known to you everything my father told me. We know now. So we want to listen to his voice. So let's sing forgive, uh, let's sing forgiveness song. You know, forgive, forget, and proceed. God's mercy and grace is all you need. But let's go on to this song. Is up. Oh, Lord, you forgive and forget and remember no more for eternity. You asked me to do the same, to be able to pray your name. The sun must not set on my anger from all malice and strife. My heart must be free. No bitter root to take hold, lest it rise up and ensnare me. You ask me to bless those who curse me, to show goodness and love to my enemy, to give to those who ask me with a heart truly cheerful and free. I must not judge others so harshly, for the measure I use is used back on me from offense. I must be free to love others the way you love me. So I had other songs here, but that's enough because we hit we hit the three o'clock. And remember what happened at three o'clock? He died for us on the cross, right? And that was the evening sacrifice of the little lamb every evening in the temple. Aren't we blessed to have so great a God? So great a God that forgives all our sins, that heals all our ills, that pulls us out of the pit, that surrounds us with love and compassion, that fills our days with good things. So our youth is renewed with the eagle, like the eagles. And what do you say? I, I agree. agree. I agree. agree. I agree. So you just need to agree with him and not think about the other stuff. We just agree. And so let's get the final blessing here. And, you know, thank you everyone for joining me. I'm just so pleased that you're with me. So, and we're with God. We're all abiding like little branches on the vine and producing the fruit. And we're together as one living building, living stones being with the chief cornerstone, Jesus being built into this temple on earth. Let's take this seriously, get his fruit out. Yeah. So the Lord bless you and keep you. you. Keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, on you and give you his you grace. grace. The Lord smile, the Lord smile upon, you upon you and give you shalom. 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 Shalom, 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 with God, Great. and your words are going to show it, and your fruit's going to show it, your life's going to show it. You agree. Everyone. Okay, everyone. God bless yeah. you. I love you. You have a love you. Great Bye. Day. Bye. 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 Bye.